In this video, we're going to take a look at what's really going on with properties behind the scenes. Let's go ahead and go to our class testing ground project and we can go to file, new file. We're going to go to Cocoa Touch and Objective-C class and we can press next. And we're going to go ahead and make this a subclass of NS object. And I'm going to call this MBF dog. Even though my class prefix started as CC, we're familiar with MBF dog, so we should be able to expect all the same functionality that we saw when we were working on our earlier project together. So we can go ahead and press next and press create. And while we had quite a few properties in our MBF dog H file or our header file, let's just add one of the properties. So we're going to add property strong non-atomic, and we can make this an NS string and all of our dogs had a name. What's really going on behind the scenes here when you write a property is you're implementing two methods, although you do not see them in the implementation file. You're also getting an instance variable which is used to store information. Our dog's name is an NS string that is stored somewhere. It's also an instance variable, and that instance variable is able to be written over and retrieved. Let's take a look at the two methods that were automatically added when we wrote this at property strong non-atomic and a string name. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few spaces at the bottom here. We can write void and we can write set and we see at the very top here that it autofills set name. So let's go ahead and use that. We're also going to do our get statement which is and a string. It returns an and a string and we can just simply write name in and again notice the autofill. Xcode knows that these methods exist even though it doesn't explicitly write this in each of these files for us when we create the property. Why doesn't it do that? Well, generally we don't need to write our own getters and setters, which we'll see what those are in a minute, because the properties automatically do that for us and it expects that we'll be able to use dot notation to access them. But for now, we want to understand what's actually being created by this property, so we're spelling it out and because Xcode recognizes that these methods exist, it's giving us the autofill. So let's go ahead and we can copy both of these methods and let's go to MBF dog and paste them into the implementation file. And we can go ahead and remove the curly braces for, uh, excuse me, the semicolons for both and add curly braces instead. And now we see that we have two methods that we need to define. Well, I mentioned that the app property also creates an instance variable for us, but we don't have that instance variable yet. So let's take a look at the syntax for that. We need to go back to mbfdog.h, and after the ns object, we're gonna add curly braces. Let's go ahead and create an instance variable, and we could give our instance variable any name we wanted, but we'll use the same one that our property creates for us in the background. So we're going to do NS string care star, and we're going to use this underscore, and we're going to write name. Now we're going to go ahead and we can comment out our property, because we're going to be writing the equivalent code for the app property. And we need to go back to MBF dog and finish creating our functionality for these methods or implementing these methods. So we're going to write underscore name is equal to name, and we're going to write return name here or excuse me, return underscore name. And what this is doing is it's saying, when we call the method name, we should return the instance variable name. And when we call the method set name, we should set the argument equal to our instance variable. So this is what's going on behind the back room. We're creating this property. We're creating what's called a getter, where we can get our value back by returning our instance variable as well as a setter, which is setting the value of our instance variable equal to the argument that we pass in. So let's see how this is actually used. We're going to go back to ccviewcontrol.m, and at the top here, go ahead and import our MBF dog, so we can create an instance of MBF dog. And we can go ahead and comment out our for loop code here, or you can even remove it if you'd like. I'm just going to comment out, again, highlighting and holding the command key and pressing forward slash allows me to fast comment multiple lines of code. And I'm going to go ahead and create an instance of MBF dog. 
and we need to allocate some memory for it, MBF dog alloc, and initialize the object. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set a property. So I'm gonna use both sets of syntax, but I'm gonna use the method syntax first and then show you that the dot syntax is actually doing a method call, which is the same thing. So we'll see what that looks like in just a second. We can do dog set name. We can set its name equal to Sparky. And we can get the dog's name back. We can simply write an NS string. We can write my dog's name. And we can set that equal to dog name. Now let's NS log our dog's name. And let's see what prints out to our console. So we see Sparky prints out to our console. We can also use the dot notation, which is doing a method call in the background. It's simply a nice syntax that we use to access properties, so it's very easy for us to differentiate properties from other methods that we've written. So we can do dog.name, we can set this equal to Sparky is awesome instead of just Sparky. And we can get our dog's name back. We don't have to create a separate variable here to get, get our dog's name. We can just pass dog.name right in so we can print it out to our console. And we can go ahead and run this again and we'll see that Sparky is awesome is now printing as our bottom NSLog statement. So here we get to see that the dot notation has a method call that's actually going on in the background that we can't see, but that's what the equivalence for getting the value of our dog as well as setting the value of our dog name with the dot notation and properties.